Trish Somerville, uh, you designed the costumes for Mank, which uh, tells the true story of Herman Mankiewicz, the writer of Citizen Kane. Uh, now, working on a movie about the making of such an iconic movie, uh, did was there any like added pressure? Did you feel uh, helping to craft uh, so much of the look of it? Uh, no, I don't think I had any added pressure. I think it was more, um, you know, I mean, it's the thing of it's not really a film about Citizen Kane. It's kind of what's behind the making of Citizen Kane. So we really just focused on the life of Herman Mankiewicz and what that was like, his life at home, his life at work, his life at the studio, his life when he was recovering and during the whole writing of the film. Um, so no, I didn't, I didn't feel the pressure to kind of match it in any kind of way, but you know, it's, I think we all as costume designers and anybody who works on film, we put enough pressure on ourselves to do the very best job that we can on every project that you don't have the additional pressure, thankfully. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, you know, one of the interesting things about the film is that it's inspired, uh, like, the look and the style of it uh, by kind of Hollywood films from that era. Uh, like, how different was that to work or in, in terms of designing costumes for that kind of style uh, versus how, how you've normally worked in the past? Um, well, I think it's each project I kind of take individually. Um, with this one, definitely... The things that interested me and be, were challenging was, you know, the concept of shooting it in black and white and of the period. So, um, you know, it's it's approaching approaching that. And I think probably the black and white was the most challenging thing is figuring out how we wanted to make that work, um, doing different testing on clothing and fabrics with uh, on my phone, like shooting everything in black and white so we could see how it would read. And, you know, just kind of moving forward from there. And at the time, I think there was nine or 10 other productions going on that were also 1930s to 1940s. So that also presented a challenge because, you know, you're talking about clothing, if you're finding authentic pieces and actual pieces for, you know, to dress background those clothes are you know, almost 100 years old. So do they still exist? What kind of condition are they in? So I think it was you know, first figuring out what was gonna be our color palette that we wanted to work with. So that when it read in black and white on the screen and on the monitors, it didn't just all come across as flat. Like dimension to it in shades and tones. And, and working in black and white, uh, since you don't have the normal, like you're not thinking towards how the color is going to look in color on screen. Did it come a lot about like texture and material and fabrics and, and, and how, how things would uh, uh, kind of look in that way as opposed to when you might normally think about color? Definitely. I mean, that was the, the thing about, you know, when we first started, we'd pull out racks of clothing at rental houses, kind of line it all up. And then I would photograph it and see what popped out too boldly, what kind of faded away. So the things I started looking for was, you know, we couldn't do prints that were too bold or too contrasting in tone because it became very um, confetti and kind of shocking to the eye. So we kind of removed all that. And then, you know, one of the challenges was we have a lot of men in this film and they're in a lot of scenes together. And so, you know, comparatively to the thirties, men's clothing was very kind of traditional and classic and you didn't have this big array of what you wore to work, you wore suits. So in that aspect, we really wanted to give each one of the men their own kind of characteristics and kind of thrust them towards who those characters really were, because a lot of them were real life people. So having a variety in the suits there was something we really wanted to focus on, so that when all the men are sitting in the same room, you know, you had a variety in their shirt tone or print on print, variety in in the tone of their suiting, and then also changing it up with ties, so that not everybody red is like a navy suit in a room, which would be a medium to like medium tone black to gray. Uh, and and so many of the of the characters in in the film are, are historical figures. In addition to Mankiewicz, you know William Randolph Hearst, uh, Louis B. Mayer, and so many others. Um, like how much research into individuals? Because I mean, none of these like a lot of these characters aren't known for like style, and you know there, a lot of them are, are, are creatives or executives. Uh, uh, so so how much research did you do into into, into kind of those characters? 
We did quite a lot of research. I mean, that is kind of the fortunate thing that you could find, like on William Randolph Hearst, you can find a lot of uh, photographic imagery of him and research on him. And also like Marion, you can find. Mayer, there is there is a bit. Thalberg, there's stuff. And definitely Mank, you know, it was nice because we could find things of him at work on, on sound stages and also at home. I mean, we even at one point found these images of him at one of his kids' bar mitzvahs. So that was like great. It was a whole family photo. So, you know, doing research in that way of, of collecting all the images of each one of these, these characters that were real life characters. And then also doing research of the period, looking at old black and white films, looking at films, you know, that Mayer had made, that Mankiewicz, the both Mankiewicz had made and looking at stuff um, that Wells had made and kind of then making boards um, so that we could have what we wanted each kind of scene or big scenes to look like and how each character could be different. So we made boards for each one of the main, the principal characters. And then we did background boards. We did boards for, you know, the circus party. We did boards for Mayer's birthday party. So we collected a lot of research and then kind of started from there of looking for fabrics, then doing design and sketching. But yeah, it did really help to have, you know, like Marion Davies has a book. There's a couple books on the Mankiewicz brothers. So also reading that to kind of get little details of things and seeing the photography that was put into those those books really helped. And you mentioned that uh, that circus party. Uh, it definitely feels like one of the most costume forward scenes in the film. Uh, was Did that take sort of some of the most work of the film or, you know, give you the opportunity for some of the most creativity? I mean, definitely um, it was really a lot of fun to do that. And in figuring out in that room, I mean, I work pretty closely with Don Bird, who's the production designer, to figure out, and, and with Eric Messerschmidt and obviously Dave, but it's like, what's the lighting like in that room? What's that setting like? And figuring out like who we really wanted to shine, who we would sit across from each other. And with um, with Marion and, and Hearst, there's actual photographs of the circus party. He would have a party every year. And Marion loved the circus party so much that they actually did that party twice, that the theme was done twice. So we did their costumes pretty true to what um, the photographs were. We kind of bumped them up a bit because uh, Charles Dance as Hearst, you know, Charles is a very thin, very fit man. So we had to give him a padded suit for the whole film. And, you know, her costume didn't fit very well. The shoulders were really slouchy and oversized. So we just kind of made him look a little bit more elegant because of the speech that he gives to Mank. I didn't want it to, to seem comical, but we did their two costumes pretty true. And I did want him to be in a metallic because he is the center of attention in that room because of the dialogue directed at him. And then I wanted Marion to really shine in that room and kind of be the candy in that room. And so we did her in like an eggshell white Duchess satin with all the marabou. And she did really have the marabou and the big hat um, in, the, in the party that she did attend. So it was kind of figuring that out and letting you know the DP know like she's going to be in white. It's going to be this bright kind of thing, so that when Mank enters the room, his eye can go directly to her because she is what you see when you first enter the room. And then choosing what we wanted Mank to wear there because I wanted him to be really calm and really, you know he's had a day at the bar and he's thinking of a lot of things that he's going to say and express. And so I wanted it to be him to be the element that didn't fit in. And you know you have this this table of 24 guests that are, you know, trapeze artists and clowns and cowboys, but yet Mank is the thing that stands out as, as not fitting in. So yeah, that scene was a lot of fun to do. And we used a lot of vintage pieces, we built pieces, we, we repurposed pieces, you know, so it was really a lot of fun. Uh, and, you know, David Fincher is, is the director of the film. Uh, you've worked with him uh, a couple times before, uh, and he's known to be a very meticulous filmmaker uh, on this very stylistic, uh, uh, very stylized film. Uh, what, what was it like working with him? What was that collaboration like uh, to get, like, this period and, and these looks uh, to, you know, exactly right? Exactly right? Well, I think the thing, I mean, the thing with Dave is, yes, he's meticulous, but he's also very precise and he's very clear and he's very informative. Um, so for me, I mean, it's a pleasure. I love working with him. I, I, you know, every time I'm asked to come back and join that family, I'm really excited about it. And I know it's always going to be a project that I'm really going to be proud of and have worked on. So, you know, he is very 
you know, he's very open with his collaboration. He he definitely wants to see things and he wants you to show him what you found. And and I think that's why, you know, he works with Don Burke, Don Burt repeatedly as well, is because Don has this big scope of like creating a world, but he's also very precise and very clear and can and sees this whole world. And so for me, I kind of start there with the two of them seeing you know how they view this what even though we don't have color in the film what are our color palettes going to be because even though you don't think you need a color palette you really really do because if not when you're looking at it with your naked eye on set it becomes very jarring if it's not controlled so you know with dave it's it's a process of he comes over and we go over all the research that we've done he kind of steers me in which direction he's feeling and how he wants it to look and then we did a lot of camera tests to figure out exactly what the lighting would be like and even though it's black and white, you know, I keep making this joke of it's Fincher vision because it's not just black and white. It's, you know, it's this really specific way that he's going to light the film in the same way of how he did the sound. And, you know, and all of it has these all very special touches that make you feel you're transported to the 1930s, like in a movie theater. So he's, I, I love working with him because it's never, hmm, I don't know. You know, it's always like, it's this, it's that. Yes, oh, that's great. Show me more. I like this direction, you know? So you, you're able to move at this constant speed of going forward. You're never kind of in this in between of like waiting for something or you're really unsure of where you should go. You get so much information that you can just run with it. Well, I want to congratulate you on your work on this film. Um, and uh, thank you so much for, for joining me. Uh, it's been a pleasure.